Pat Warren. Weather with Bob Sopka. Sports with Chris Ely. As far as the NAACP is concerned, it is over. But Ben Chavis apparently isn't taking no for an answer. And though he's been fired as executive director, Chavis is holding a scheduled leadership summit. An event that is now not sanctioned by the NAACP. Now this summit is taking place in Baltimore today under a cloud of controversy. Chavis was fired for mishandling funds, including a $330,000 settlement to a woman who accused him of sexual harassment. We have team coverage tonight, beginning with Kai Jackson, who's standing by live at the Enon Baptist Church in Baltimore. Kai? All right, Richard, here at the Enon Baptist Church in West Baltimore, this is a scheduled rally for Dr. Ben Chavis, a show of support by a lot of people who disagree with the NAACP's decision to fire him. There's a lot of emotion today, particularly from student members of the NAACP, whom Chavis went out and recruited uh, into this organization. Now, NAACP leaders told me today that there were several things that led up to Dr. Ben Chavis being fired as executive director. But this payment offer, this alleged payment offer to a former employee was apparently the last straw. Dr. Ben Chavis found plenty of support at Bethel AME Church. As he preached, he sounded like a man with new power and not one who had just been fired. The former NAACP executive director even hinted that he might get his job back. I've just been told by a judge that they may have took the vote the wrong way. NAACP board members fired Chavis by a voice vote and not an actual count. But the NAACP's vice chairman says the vote was legal and by the books. If there was a requirement of a two-thirds or a three-quarter vote, then you would have to be very specific on the count. But if it's a majority vote that determines the outcome, you have only to have a method that determines what the majority is. The reaction to Chavis being fired is mixed. We all have our faults being men. You know, if he did not do the allegation, he wouldn't have paid the kind of money. Follow me? I believe in Dr. Chavis' words, his viewpoints, and he has a message for... African Americans and people all over the nation. Dr. Ben Chavis won both supporters and critics with his aggressive leadership style, a manner in which he reached out to many in the black community who've been ignored in the past. Some say that style contributed to his success and at the same time, his firing. Chavis was criticized for including Nation of Islam leader Louis Farrakhan in the NAACP's African American Leadership Summit in June. But he's been praised for getting young people to join the organization who are now threatening to leave. But I'm hoping after they have a chance to, to digest what has happened, uh, that what is in the best interest of the association is what I hope they continue to do. But board members say the final straw was an alleged deal Chavis made with the former NAACP secretary. Chavis apparently agreed to pay Mary Stanzel more than $300,000 to settle her sex discrimination charges against him. The board should have been aware of not just the money that was this, that was spended, expended for this issue, but also aware that the organization was also confronted with the issue. Earl Schinhoster, the NAACP's national field secretary, will temporarily take over Chavis's job. Ironically, he was a finalist for the job of executive director when Chavis was selected. So you've got a couple of things going on here, Richard. One, of course, is the threatening of young people to leave the organization. That could severely hurt the NAACP. Again, uh, an organization uh, which has been criticized in the past for not bringing up young people. Some board members obviously would disagree with that statement. On the other hand, you have people saying there's an ideological difference with the NAACP versus a class difference, saying that some people want the NAACP to go one way ideological, other people saying, no, that's not it at all. It's a class difference. Uh, the underclass, so to speak, as people might say, trying to get into the organization and some people resisting that effort. Uh, the truth be known, it may be a combination of both of those. Richard? Kai, any questions being raised tonight about Dr. William Gibson's position as chairman of the board there? There are some questions being raised. In fact, as uh, we talked with, Dr. Ben, with Mr. Ben Andrews today, uh, a vice chairman, uh, he told us that Dr. Gibson's uh, future with the NAACP is questionable, as well as the entire board who has been sitting um, over Dr. Uh, ben Chavis at this point. So in all likelihood, there is a possibility that you might see an all-new board uh, makeup, or at least some of the new board makeup, uh, when the new elections are held. Richard. All right, Kai, thank you very much. Team coverage reporter Kai Jackson is reporting live tonight from Enon Baptist Church.
Well, there was a further rush of supporters to the defense of Ben Chavis today. They're not happy that he's lost his job. In fact, at today's leadership summit held at Baltimore's Bethel AME Church, some of them were talking about starting a new organization. Our team coverage continues with the weekend team's Dennis Edwards. Uh, when I think about what has happened with the NAACP, I think about what happened when Malcolm X had to leave the nation, when Jesse Jackson had to leave SCLC, now Ben Chavis has to leave the NAACP. It may be the best thing for both Ben and the NAACP. George Curry, the editor and CEO of Emerge magazine, attended the first African-American leadership conference last month. He's not at all concerned about Dr. Benjamin Chavis's ouster from the NAACP. Curry says that change could lead to an opportunity to start a new organization. I think so. I think absolutely so. I think people are going to insist on the kind of integrity and guts that Ben Chavis has that he will be forced to be head some kind of organization. The issues that are before the summit are those that deal with our youth, with the gangs, with the violence and drugs, are issues that need to be addressed by the totality of the African-American leaders. I feel good. Yeah. Dr. Chavis opened the two-and-a-half-day summit with Nation of Islam leader Dr. Louis Farrakhan at his side. Farrakhan is one of 85 national, community, and grassroots leaders attending. Some observers claim Dr. Chavis's refusal to distance himself from groups like these led to his downfall at the NAACP. We are dealing with the salvation, redemption, restoration, and liberation of an entire people. And nothing and no one shall deter that which God has willed. And this is the will of God. But now that the summit has taken center stage in the minds of a number of community leaders, most of them have not forgotten what happened to Ben Chavis yesterday. Ben Chavis sought to restore the NACP to its greatness. A group of narrow-minded, uh, old people on the board decided to try to derail that, but it won't happen. George Curry believes we're watching history in the making. Ben is the person who called the summit together. He is the magnet. He did what other black leaders talked about. He brought us together. And I would be very disappointed if he didn't continue this capacity. For the weekend team, Dennis Edwards, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. The summit continues tomorrow with discussions on social, economic, and crime issues. Well.